I'm going to be painting this tiny little bee here. Just for reference, you can see he's about maybe a centimeter and a half big. So to start with, I have this Winsor Newton Series 7 brush, size zero, which is about all I'm going to need for this particular little bee because <laughs> you're not gonna need anything much bigger than that brush. All right, so I start off with some gamboge and I just do I, I would hesitate to call it a wash at this size because there isn't really enough surface to legitimately call it that but I start off with just painting in some of this yellow And at this size, everything dries fast enough that you hardly need to worry at all about any sort of bleeding of colors because everything's dry almost instantaneously. Now for the dark stripes, I'm using a Daniel Smith pigment called Bloodstone, which looks sort of brownish. Um, it's this one over here. This is what it ends up looking like. It's it's sort of a warm toned dark. Nearly black. But that's perfect for this because I want it to have a, a slightly warmer tone to it. It's not completely black black. And the technique that I'm using to apply this now is called dry brush. It's where the bristles are nearly dry on your on your brush point uh, and sometimes even I will sort of wipe away any excess liquid before I paint so you know I have a napkin nearby and I just go like that and it sort of spreads your brush hairs a little bit more. It's a really good technique for doing shading on very detailed things, or in this case, fuzzy little bumblebee butts. <laughs> or I guess these are not bumblebee, honeybee butts. And I can do that and gradually lay in and build up darkness. Notice I'm leaving the highlight here along its body. I'm painting around this white highlighted area. This is a situation where sometimes people ask, you know, do you use any sort of masking fluid? And at, like I said, at this scale, not very necessary because it's it's just so small, it's easier to paint around something like that. The underside has a little bit of yellow over here. More of the gamboge. and darkening that through these stripes as well. Again, using dry brush technique because this gives it more of that fuzzy texture. Even in areas that are sort of solid color, you still wanna maintain that textured look. I 
Okay, now I'm going to start darkening up these, these black stripes. And to do that, I'm going to mix in a little bit of, let's see, Payne's Gray, I think. Payne's Gray is now a more cooler type of black. It has more of a blue tint to it. So this, these are my preferences over using straight black usually is to try to decide whether I want a warmer or cooler version of it. And from that I, I choose, you know, Payne's Gray is my cooler black choice. Although if I want an even more neutral tone, then there is neutral tint. Uh, another one of my favorite ones to use, which is, as it says, a, a much more, as it's called, a much more neutral sort of blackish gray tone. And that is my preferred choice if I want something that is less definitively cool or warm. And sometimes I can mix in a little bit of that with one of my other choices to get something in between. Now I want to add a bit more warm punch to the edges of some of these yellow stripes and so I'm using uh, some reds here. This is Windsor Red I think is what I'm mixing in. And just a little bit of dry brush with that. Along the upper edges of the stripes. And then to blend that a little bit, I just take water on my brush. And it's just clean water on here now, and I just sort of blend everything a little bit. You still maintain the texture of dry brush, as long as you don't load up your brush with too much water when you do this. But it helps to just soften the edges and lines of things. Now, there's a little bit more of a shaded look to some of those, more neutrally shaded look to some of those lower stripes. So to get that, I'm taking, let's see, Windsor Violet with a little bit of Buff Titanium. I'm using a mixture of uh, a lot of Daniel Smith as well as Windsor Newton pigments. And again, I'm still using dry brush here. Make sure these two colors has given me just sort of a tinted beige, but it's perfect for what I need right now. And I'm just running the, my brush along the edges as well soften everything because I want this sort of fuzzy look even though my background is just gonna be plain white on this since this is a more more of a botanical type of approach to illustration okay so now that I have that let's get a little bit of the pollen on the legs All this is done with a very light touch of the brush and mixing. So I'll start with, I started with gamboge there, but now I'm adding a little bit of the Windsor Red for the shadows. 
really deepen that rich tone. This dark over here needs to be darkened up a little bit more, punching up the blackness. This is what you do with watercolor. You just constantly push the darks further and further back as you go so that things that are lightest generally are what you start with. All right. And the eye is also going to be done with Payne's Gray. Making sure I keep the highlight white, the white of the paper. I want that nice sharp punch of a highlight there. And more dry brush as I paint the rest of the head and body. I'm following the contour of this, of the body, of the shape that I'm, I'm doing with the dry brush. And it's a subtle thing in, in the final, but it is, it is something that you notice when you, when you look closely at the texture. And, and when you're painting something this small, then yeah, people are going to be looking closely. <laughs> And then for the tiny little feet, I want a little bit more warmth in those darks. So I'm using just a very concentrated version of the bloodstone mixed with a tiny bit of Windsor Red. Because I want these, I want them to be dark, but I want them to have a much warmer tone to it. Need a little bit more liquid on the brush sometimes if it gets a little bit too dry. It's a it's a thin line you have to walk between dry brush and a too dry brush.
Adding more to these shadows here. I'm sort of shaping these tiny little bits of pollen on his legs. And then the antenna. Softening that bottom edge a little bit more and blending in some of this dry brush stuff. And then all that's left is the wings, which are just sort of a little bit of a blur. They're mostly translucent, so there's not much that I need to do to them. Just add a little bit of defining darkened shadows to them. And because they're translucent, you would see tiny little bits of what's going on underneath. Those are the places that are going to be darkened. So one more that's going to be happening in this piece. I haven't gotten to him yet, but there you go.